Greetings everyone, and great here for another Age of Empires 2 Definite Edition replay. Spawn on the bottom left side as the Red Dravidians. We have French Owl. Spawn on the top right side as, or just right side as a Cyan Spanish. We have TW, number sign 1. The music seems a little bit disorganized. I don't know why, the music sounds like it's not coherent. Oh well, that's probably me going a little bit crazy. But let's go ahead and cover each player's bonuses. Dravidians bonuses. They are infantry and naval civilization. There is some possibility of getting fishing ships on this map, but that's not saying all too much. They receive additional food or additional wood per advancing next age, which can be quite nice. Fishermen and fishing gear ships carry plus 15 food. There is some fishables, which not going to really pan out all too much. PX technologies cost 50% less, which is actually quite handy. And we got skirmishers and elite and uh, elephant archers attack 15, 25% faster as I get all of my uh, can't speak, which is, is quite nice. I'm trying to throw some arrows there on the scout right there. Other benefits are we do, of course, have the unique new Yormai swordsman and uh, Thrasade warship. The warship's not going to be useful. Unique Texas medical core, which grants elephants additional health regen, 20 health per minute, which is not exactly a huge amount. I think like Berserkers at base is 10, and Elephants have much, much more health. But they can probably utilize it a little bit better. Unique technology is Wolf Steel. Infantry and cavalry attacks ignore armor, which is very handy indeed. Team bonus stocks provide additional population room, which is not going to be all too useful. I see a couple blue. We do go ahead and look at a Scout Rush for Cyan. Let's take a look at Cyan's bonuses while well, these Scouts are advancing forward. Looks like one of the villagers have been exposed. Do have a spearman trying to ward them away. They do. The scouts are going to back off and enter back on in. Going for another wall segment there. At least got it started. And this villager will go down to the scouts. Very nice. That is red scouts right there. One of Cyan's scouts do go down. <coughs> Spanish. Gunpowder and monk civilization. Builders work 30% faster, which is always nice to have. Blacksmith upgrades don't cost gold. Very nice to have. Cannon galleons benefit from ballistics, fire more faster, more accurately, and gunpowder units fire 18% faster, which is not bad. Unique unit is a conquistador, is a mounted hand cannoneer, and the missionary is a something to do with your wife. Unique text: We have the Inquisition monks convert faster, and supremacy villagers are stronger in combat. Team bonus is trade uh, five additional gold, but that's not going to be very useful in a one v one. <clears throat> what do you got now? A blacksmith being employed on out by Cyan. And Cyan is going for a handful of scouts. What technologies can... Uh, okay, Spanish. Spanish is a Cyan. Hasn't clicked in my mind just yet. He, of course, can get uh, Light Cavalry and Huzzars later on. But that will be about it. He does have access to all Cavalry technology. So he will just have very generic Cavalry other than the Conquistadors. They do have access, he does have access to Paladins once he gets that uh, point in time, but that's pretty far down the line. And there's no guarantees he'll go for it. He'll probably go for a lot of Conquistadors. Uh, it is, this is Age of Empires Definitive Edition, so it's not, it is actually an HD remaster, which is very, very beautiful. It does the original game quite well when it comes to graphics. Scouts are pursuing the Red Scout. He's going ahead and receives some fire there, or not fire, slashes there. Side's so currently just going for a bunch of villagers. Let's take a look what Red is going for. We've got villagers, and I saw the archers. They do have a bit of a hit squad of archers. Spanish can go for archers their own. It's a nice way to throw off your opponent a little bit since they only can't get even crossbowmen. And now we got his scouts are. They only have two pierce armor at the moment, and the archers have five damage. The guys just got their uh, first archer upgrade, which will put 50% more damage on these scouts with the two pierce armor. Red scout here will spot all the horses inside a stable. And the assigned uh, scouts, maybe just a good idea, just try to apply pressure, keep your opponent contained, but he won't have, won't have any capability in going or any sort of harassment. Oh, looks like I sort of slowed down a little bit. Cyan, or Red Scout does go down to the Cyan Scouts. <clears throat> and we've got a good number of forms employed out by Red, looks like. 
Red still does not have Castle Age being researched, and the Science Scouts do manage to find opening there. It's good hits in. Switch over to Cyan. Cyan's currently deploying out nothing, so likely Cyan is saving up his resources to tech up. You got a one scout does go down, two scouts actually did go down, one red villager went down. And let's see now. Military villager. There we go, villagers. Red is behind of Cyan's villager count. Cyan is going for a bunch of skirmishers. He is has plenty of food for more scouts, but or villagers, but not going for any. And he's not really. There we go. We got some skewing up. He may have been saving up at one point in time, but he decides to stop saving up and going for a big wave of skirmishers to force back these archers. He does have a great number of archers there, but the skirmishers, of course, they're a counter unit. We are seeing Castle Age 4 red at the moment, as well as the uh, Fierce Armor armor upgrade. Right now, Skirmishers only do 3 damage. They did get the plus 1 range Same. and damage upgrade. The Archers have 0 Pierce Armor, so they will take a full damage from the Skirmishers plus the bonus damage there. And apparently that's enough skirmish to one shot an archer, and they do pitiful amount of damage to builders and any other villagers since they have two pierce armor. Apparently these ladies' dresses are much more durable than archers' uh, shirts. You have a great number of uh, skirmishers here. Whereas I am for counterattack with these archers, he slipped around, and one of Cy uh, Red knows that, or Cyan knows that Red's going to be eyeing for a counterattack. The skirmishers are pretty far away from home, so it'll take a bit of time for him to get any re uh, reaction to this force. Over here, we got the scout and the skirmishers of base four. This single archer is trying to throw some arrows, and that is throwing some arrows to the scout cavalry. That archer does receive a bit of hits. We've got a good number of archers here. Not advancing forward. Castle Age has been researched. He's saving up for Botkin arrow and crossbows immediately. Uh, does Sion know about this uh, army? No, he does not know about it. Remember, vision range in this game is actually pretty poor. He knows about those archers now. Castle Wage is on the way. And there's a crossbowman upgrade. And look, it's annihilating the Palisade Gates. Crossbowmen do have seven range, so are able to outrange those skirmishers no problem. The skirmishers do have four pierce armor, but crossbowmen have seven attacks, so each arrow will do three damage, assuming hits. Sina will need to go for the elite skirmisher upgrade sooner rather than later once he gets the research, as well as Botkin arrow. Castle Age has been researched now. Farms are receiving some arrow fire. Botkin arrow and elite skirmisher upgrades now being researched. To help these guys level the playing field versus these crossbowmen. Crossbowmen only have one pierce armor at the moment, and the skirmishers are going to have three damage, soon to be four damage from the Botkin arrow. Now give them up to six range, crossbowmen have four seven range, which is. That range can be overcome, but it will sustain a bit of front, uh, initial attack damage. And now with the elite skirmisher upgrade, he has matching range, as well as additional health. And now do got a. That is Science Castle. Sign's going for a defensive castle right there, which should be able to cover this gold as well. Maybe push the castle onto this little bit of high ground. That would be great. Skirmishers are advancing forward. A big wave of villagers are advancing forward. He wants to get this castle deployed out to prevent these archers from going to his base. He won't be able to slip around through this direction. Oh, and I mentioned beforehand that would be in a great spot, and he agrees with me. I love it when I guess things right, or say something's right, and then later on... The player agrees with me. Presto. This game's like Door the Explorer, right? If I shout Monday. loud enough at my screen, the players will listen to me and follow my command. Good hits there onto these crossbowmen. He's, if he hits the ones in the front, he should be able to get at least the missed shots to hit. And missed shots do, do half damage, but still, that's better than no damage. Zion's castle has been out. He will need to get out town center. Red has a point out second town center. Village account is in favor of red by a small margin. 
Cyan. Let's go for another town center now. That will help cover this breach there as well. And right now, Cyan's doing a good job of containing Red into his base. Scout's coming forward. forward. It's trying to scout his opponent. He was successful and spots the Conquistador. That Conquistador gives him very important information right there. And we do have, looks like a Siege Workshop tent to be built there. It was unsuccessful. I heard somebody getting chewed up by a Jaguar rip right there. That villagers may be pursued. I think both players have spotted this relic. I'm not sure who's seen what relics. Cyan has spotted these three relics. And the last one's up here. And that's a safe one for Red. Has Red seen that relic? Red has only seen these two relics entirely, so not seeing that one's actually quite important. I put quite a bit of emphasis on relics because a little bit extra gold uh, generation never hurts and does add up on enough. Add up quite a bit. Of, ah, can't speak. Does add up over time. The ties from it, very nice to have. Especially when there's no gold left on the map. Skirmishers advancing. Engaging the archer range. So have a one conquistador, some more conquistadors being pulled out. We do also got some cyan monks. His opponent, Dravidians, is infantry and naval. So they have swordsmen as well as access to some decent elephants. The monks will be useful versus the elephants. If you deploy them out, you can always get some missionaries as well. Ooh, and these Conquistadors are really seeing some good hits there. One Conquistador does, does go down, and you want to keep these guys alive. They are very potent. Whoops, and I knocked my uh, headphones out of the uh, port. Please give me one moment with that. Skirmishers advancing forward are nailing the house with a bunch of spears. Apparently throwing spears into a stone house like that's ineffective. We do have a siege workshop here. Either going for Maganels, Scorpions, or even Batteram would be half would not be half bad. Maganels or Batteram would be quite useful in engaging these uh, structures. Start willing the way, and he, this one has a well, Maganel of his own, which can annihilate these skirmishers no problem. The Maganel does have some range, so does the skirmishers, so they're at equal range, which means the Maganel has a good chance of getting some great damage in. And actuality, having these couple skirmishers advance forward like that was. Half bad, it did alert his opponent that there's a Magnell. And only losing two to that when they hadn't react whatsoever is actually quite handy for Cyan. I think Red's Magnell was an attack move order. Okay, so we're trying to hit the skirmishers. Yeah, Cyan's Magnell on the high ground is getting some good damage in. The high ground damage bonus will come in handy for the Magnell. And here comes a Pretty sizable hit there on the skirmishers. He's trying to get the Maganel. He does get the Maganel right there. Did lose quite a bit to take it out, but his own Maganel is still up and going. Some of these skirmishers are not being picked off by his opponent's skirmishers as well as the Conquistadors. More Conquistadors are being reinforced, of course. The skirmishers are getting hit. We do have the Conquistadors braving Pounce of Fire. Pounce of does have seven damage and the conquistors have four pierce armor so they sustain three damage from the initial arrow all additional arrows will just do one damage Ooh, that was friendly fire we have more uh, maganels pushing way forward for red And these farms are receiving a bit of fire. Skirmishers are starting to engage each other. Science, of course, quite wounded. Red's crossbows are quite wounded as well. Science, Maganel does go down to the red Maganel. That was a miss down the Conquistors. Conquistors, of course, mounted, so they're a bit more mobile. Science, uh, skirmishers are being cleaned, cleaned on up. Red's uh, crossbow advancing forward. There may be some more. There's another Maganel there. And if it makes its way to high grounds, it can get some extra damage for splash damage. Skirmishers do go down. And looks like the Conquistadors are still trying to skirmish around. Conquistadors only have six range as opposed to crossbow seven. So they are outranged. They do void that burst there. He gets a pretty sizable hit there on those crossbowmen. Crossbowmen are the expensive stuff. Conquistadors now receiving some fire. And now 
If you were able to get the Conquering Swords engaged while the uh, crossbowmen are stopping to shoot the Maganel, that'd be great. All those skirmishers do go down. That allows the Conquering Swords to push in a bit more better. This Maganel does go down, but gets a deadly hit there. Science con uh, Conquering Scores are slowly getting whittled away, however. And it's hard picking off these crossbows with them now. And the Conquering Swords will win out if they get some decent hits. Got more conquistadors pushing away forward. We got Red's uh, castle being pulled out. Science uh, Maganel needs to find could find a very juicy target there on these villagers. Zion has less villagers as well, down by 20 villagers. This actually is quite a bit. It's a great hit there on the villagers, and now they're just gonna be shanking that Maganel. Maganel does go down. Zion just may need to back off, get reinforcements. Is there uh, units inside that garrison? We do actually have conquistadors being uh, garrisoned inside that castle. It does increase its arrow count by by five, which is actually pretty good. They're just gonna receive some skirmisher fire. Skirmishers can focus down these villagers. And right now, Cyan is going for castle age, getting out more conquistadors as well. Trying to keep this castle up and going. Red is not gone for pure age just yet. These Maganels need to start hitting these villagers. I think at this point in time, he needs a castle without his own. Some of these are ran by swordsmen are being hit as well. Ran by swordsmen are more or less a quick reserve. Here comes the Conquistadors. Hit around on the uh, castle. Does take that out. Villagers are going to be trying to build the castle once again. He does have a great number of Conquistadors. So if he doesn't stop the villagers, the Conquistadors will rip him apart. If he goes with the Conquistadors, the villagers will have, uh, can build without receiving any aggression. These villagers may need to back off at this point in time. He's losing a good number of them. He needs to make sure he keeps one alive. And all the villagers do go down. Got another wave of villagers advancing forward. He should be able to get the castle up with those uh, reinforcing villagers. Red's not going for castle, uh, Imperial Age now. Cyan is almost done Imperial Age and he needs to get out of Trebuchet as soon as possible. Or some Bombard. He could throw the... Uh, Conquistors in the castle, they're a little bit wounded. And now we do have our first trebuchet on the build queue, getting Will Barrel as well. How many uh, towns do we have for Cyan? Just, looks like just uh, the three. Oh, there's a fourth one there as well. Cyan's not doing all too great on village production, he does have a bit of food to spend in. And the siege workshop does go down. Both these castles are on high ground. I don't think he can get trebuchets up here to fire against this castle. That's maybe at the max range. He could try getting one's trebuchets at the same uh, height in order to heat siege the castle. That looks like it is the case. Oh. Jaguar says hello to the villager. The villager is petting the kitty with her uh, knife. And she shanks the kitty. Going for some houses here, but does go and pick off. Multiple villagers are getting picked off, but he does have a good number of villagers right now. 114 versus his opponent's 85. And the castle's getting some good, uh, receiving some good hits there from these trebuchets. And I think he does get high ground damage where he's at right now. So, and because that seems like it's punching a bit harder than it normally would. Now this time can be focused down that can help deny the gold. Okay, so making that advance. Thus far, his opponent hasn't received, received pure age. No, that castle. He better not stop or start building that. He has to deal with these trebuchets before he even attempts to build a castle right there. Cancels it. Good. Sign's going to be laying down a handful of stables and maybe for light cavalry. I don't. Yep, he's going for uh, light cavalry, then perhaps uh, hussars. I think that other scaffolding may have been interrupted. And now we do have conscription as much of other researchers are being deployed out for cyan for red we do have there's like arbalist chemistry and halberdier going for more of an archer focus army he doesn't have any technology to really uh, maximize archers but he just have all the stock standard so he has good arbalists to say the least
We got another sign cancel cast me employed on out. Very good. And now we've got some of these light cavalry advancing forward. Light cavalry is much stronger than the scout cavalry. And some of these villagers start getting gunned down. And now we've got these trebuchets advancing forward. So it looks like we're going to just hit various infrastructure. And the archer range first. Very good. Some of these punky swords are being uh, picked off. Light cavalry getting some good hits as well. We've got the run by swordsman. Wait, they have some sort of charge attack there? I'm not sure what that charge attack does. It probably just bonus damage. Oh yeah, I'm getting them mixed up with the uh, Arambai Swordsmen. These are Urumai Swordsmen. Getting all their names mixed up. We have these uh, Pikemen advancing forward. Halberdiers on the way. Does get some infantry units there with his trebuchet. These trebuchets just may need to back off. It's like having getting hit. He, I think he has this castle garrison with some uh, Conquistadors, which also greatly increase the arrow count by zero at this point in time. Like how we've been picked on off, we got some clunky stores on the high ground. They're getting focused down. There's a lot of uh, skirmishers in this region to help us make the advance as well. Yeah, he needs to pull back these uh, trebuchets. They did some damage, but now there's nothing much that they can do. Though he is sending in these halberdiers to their death thanks to the nearby castle. Clunky stores trying to hit these villagers there, trying to interrupt the stone income. And he is getting some decent hits there on those infantrymen, but he does not pretend to get blast, uh, blast damage with his trebuchets. Probably just making their way forward, getting some hits there on these trebuchets. Red has a massive wave of trash on the Doku. He also has maxed out population. Science right now going for a night transition. So he's not. He got his light cavalry. He may be eyeing for some paladins. He is at pure age to get cavaliers and paladins, but I don't see. Cavalier on the research queue, nor Hussars. Cyan has claimed two relics, which is very good. Right, it's likely to spot this relic by now. Now, do we got some knights advancing forward? He sees all the uh, halberdiers. You may want to avoid that. Skirmishers, of course, are uh, countered by knights. But there's a little bit too many halberdiers. These trebuchets are slowly being picked off, but so are these halberdiers. We got more conquistadors on the build queue for Cyan. He may be not eyeing any more uh, knights for the time being, or more light cavalry. Probably looked at the investment to get up the cav uh, paladins, it's like, eh, not worth it. He would do better off with more conquistadors. He's like having against some good damage on these forces. Science trying to hold the line. Let's take a look at Science Boom Cube. It's, uh, I mean, Red. Red does have a great uh, production queue, but needs more food and wood. Gold's plenty. So he could go for his own uh, Arbalest again. Arbalest were doing quite well, just needs a bit more wood for that. Both sides have plenty of population space. Sion doesn't really have a whole large, large uh, force. Before I switched over, he was at 130. And he has uh, 120, uh, 112 villagers, so he now has a very, very small force. But he's doing a good job taking on these trash units. Red does have enough uh, stone for another castle, but with these trebuchets in the region, he won't be able to deploy out any castles along those trebuchets on the front line. Red does also, like I mentioned before, he has a good reserve of gold. Maybe we should I spend it. And Kenneers would probably would be generic, pack a punch, but probably won't be all that great since so you don't get any anti-infantry effect. How do you charge on board against a good hit there on the conquistadors? Obviously, also getting tied up right there. Hazards have been on, have been put on Alpha Cyan. 
He's trying to throw as much trash there, but he's making no real advantage. He's back back. He's getting slowly pushed back. He needs to build some more barracks in the back line. He has a lot of villagers right there not being passed as well. He has 20 villagers not being passed, which is massive. And he needs that wood. He needs that food. He really needs the wood. Right, so boy has own trebuchets now. He's getting some hits there on the science castle. So of course it's on the high ground. He's on the low ground. He's being put up here to get to the equal ground. He hasn't been, and science is starting to target down red trebuchets as well. He is trying to repair it up in combat. He does have a good force of halberdiers for defense. Red trebuchets can be hit, but Science are starting to slowly go down. Does take out the trib uh, castle as well. Science could take time to re uh, regroup, perhaps get a big wave of conquistadors. I guess his opponent's current composition, going for champions wouldn't be half bad. Let's see how well, what heck uh, his militia line looks like. He can get out champions, he can get out halberdiers, he can get uh, supplies, he can get uh, everything. I know I saw the new research that's uh, going to be available soon. Not sure it's implemented just yet. There is a possible. The new patch is probably going to come out. We'll add a new Pierce Armor technology called Gambersons for the militia line. Huzzars trying to charge him forward, trying to deal with these trebuchets. They're getting hit by these halberdiers. However, one trebuchet does go down, starting to repair up the castle as well. And the castle does go down. And if he charges forward, he will run straight into the castle, in which the extra arrows from the castle, if he shows the Karras and his, uh, on stars wouldn't be half bad. Like how we do is take out another trebuchet, the Light Calf or Huzzar is going to advance forward to another trebuchet. Gain some damage there, but he probably won't be able to save it. If all those uh, Huzzars do go down, but now he's going to hit some of these villagers trying to collect that gold. We do have some Maganels on the floor on the field, and Halberdiers are charging on the floor trying to chase down some of these forces. But they're getting ripped apart by the castle. They should get some good work onto these uh, Huzzars, however. That's going for another barracks, which he will need the more production there. Has more Halberdiers being built. And going for a defensive castle right there. Science trebuchet is way back here. Some of these stables not getting under siege from Red's trebuchet. And it looks like Science is going to be eyeing to advance on his opponent from the southern flank. Red's castle is almost up and going. It looks like Science Trebuchet's iron for some counter barrages. His uh, Huzzle is trying to advance forward, trying to get some hits in. Another Trebuchet has been pulled out by Red. He's finally against the, against the high ground, so we'll take a little bit extra time to take it out. It looks like Science Hassle has gotten the hoardings upgrade as well. I can see the extra health. We, the Huzzle is going forward. Does take out one Trebuchet. This other one is being repaired. And it looks like those Huzzars will go down. Country Swords advancing forward, trying to get some shots on in. Yep, yeah, and now those uh, concrete sources need to see it fall back. They're saying a bit too much damage right there. Concrete sources do get picked off by those Hazars. Or not Hazars, uh, Halberdiers. Looks like more relics have been claimed. Looks like Red's found that safe relic of his. And now the Halberdiers are advancing forward. They're going for a castle fire, so they will sustain a little extra damage there, as that also gives the Hazards some time to charge forward, hit that trebuchet. Looks like Red has a massive reserve of stone. Both sides are drained of gold quite a bit. I think uh, Cyan just may have bought some gold from the market, so he is using some trade there. Red has finally got a good reserve of wood. It could take time to build some more barracks. I do have a bombard here. Does fire one more shot before going down. 
takes out the trebuchet there, but there's now two reinforced trebuchets and Red's going for some houses to act like as tank traps. Some of Red's villagers are going down to these uh, Huzzars. Science uh, is out of stone for the castle, does have a bit now. And we've got the halberdiers trying to engage these uh, light cavalry. He will draw them into the castle. Halberdiers are going to be stabbing these uh, Huzzars no problem. He's just going to stand there and fight. There's going to be a big loss there on the Huzzars. Red is making a good protection there, getting just more and more Huzzars since he knows his opponent's just going straight for Light Cowling Conquistor. His opponent has not really transitioned. Could have transitioned to uh, the militia line, I would say, would have been a good idea. Even just getting out Log Swordsman probably will pay out big dividends. And I think Sign may have backed out of the game. Yeah, Sign's backed out of the game. I'm sort of surprised that Red won the game. It looked like it, he was pushed back quite far, but then he managed to claw his way back in. This is Anne Gray saying thank you for watching and on to the next replay.